Disney Pixar's WALL-E is a love story that is out of this world, full of action, humor, dancing, and a shipload of hidden secrets. So put on your Sunday clothes, there's a lot of Easter eggs out there. WALL-E stars, well, WALL-E, a waste allocation load lifter Earth class. Did you know that his name isn't just a creative acronym, but also a tribute to Walt Disney? Walt Disney's full name was Walter Elias Disney. Walt E. Disney. Wall E. See what they did there? Would it also surprise you to know that Wally isn't voiced by an actor? Wally is voiced by sound effects legend Ben Burt, who designed all the Star Wars sound effects you've come to know and love over the years. In fact, before production began on Wally, he had just finished up work on Star Wars Episode 3 Revenge of the Sith, and had actually told his wife that he never wanted to work on another film involving robots again. Ha! <laughs> Didn't take long to eat those words, eh, Ben old boy? What's more, Wally would demand the most sounds Burt ever recorded for a single film, 2,500 sounds, easily twice the average of a Star Wars movie. The gig would also last him a whole two years. So what changed his mind? When Andrew Stanton approached him for the project, he said, I need you to be 80% of my cast. A fascinating prospect. Wally is a sentient trash compactor programmed to help clean up the Earth. In his time of operation, he's collected a host of treasures, trinkets, and parts to keep himself functioning. He's also befriended a cockroach. Did you know that Cockroach has a double Easter egg name? His name? Hal. Fans of film history get it. Hal Roach was an early film producer who cut his teeth on the Harold Lloyd silent films as well as the Little Rascals varieties and TV series. Fans of sci-fi will also find a connection with the name Hal thanks to the Stanley Kubrick Opus 2001 A Space Odyssey, Hal 9000, the mind center of the spaceship Discovery. Hal is a sort of acronym like WALL-E. Hal stands for Heuristically Programmed Algorithmic Computer. That is a mouthful. Basically, it stands for this computer does not play well with humans. We'll leave it at that. A lot of inspiration is drawn from 2001, especially in the visuals department. But did you know that director Andrew Stanton and his crew sought inspiration from the early days of filmmaking for this futuristic setting? WALL-E is a script with very little dialogue. With that in mind, Stanton prepared for the film by spending his lunch hours watching the entire library of Charlie Chaplin and Buster Keaton movies. Sorry, Harold Lloyd. It took him 18 months to get through all the films that way. But watching the silent films proved incredibly helpful in designing an almost purely visual form of storytelling for WALL-E. Of course, there is one film that seems to be the driving force behind WALL-E, both the movie and the character. The 1969 feel-good musical Hello, Dolly, directed by screen icon Gene Kelly. The song Put On Your Sunday Clothes is arguably the heartbeat of WALL-E. Stanton was especially taken with the opening words. That first phrase, out there, came out. It just fit musically. I finally realized, you know what, this song is about two guys that are just so naive, they've never left the small town, and they just want to go out in the big city for one night and kiss a girl. That's my main character. More than that, Andrew, it's basically the plot of your movie, too. The song's writer, Jerry Herman, agreed to let Stanton use the songs for the movie, though he really couldn't conceive of why or how they'd be used. But when he saw the finished product, he called it genius. Takes one to know one. Wally watches Hello, Dolly! to better understand love. In the version he watches, there's a close-up of the two lovers holding hands. Did you know that close-up did not exist in the original film? Wally's filmmakers had to alter the footage to better highlight holding hands as a symbol of romance. Now, Hello, Dolly! isn't the official soundtrack to Wally. On the contrary, celebrated composer Thomas Newman created a beautifully curious and sweeping score for the film, but he too has a connection to the classic musical. His uncle Lionel Newman did some uncredited work with Hello, Dolly! Notice how the clips from Hello, Dolly! are live action? So are the pictures and videos involving the by and large CEO and president Shelby Forthright played by the late great Fred Willard. But take a look at the portraits of each captain who served on the Axiom Starliner spacecraft. Moving forward in time, you can see that the first portrait is of a live-action person, and as the captains progress, they don't just get larger, they become more animated as well. By the way, did you check out the length of command each captain holds? Reardon, the first captain, served for 143 years. How the heck long did he live? This just goes to show you that life expectancies in the future increase quite a bit. Before we go on, one more thing about Captain Reardon. He's not just human, he's an Easter egg too. Quite a few Easter egg names in this movie, huh? Reardon just so happens to be the name of the co-writer of the film, Jim Reardon. As for his likeness, that's not actually Jim playing the captain. No, that is writer-director-producer Dave Allen Johnson. Huh, did you notice a lot of the characters aren't being played by self-proclaimed actors in this movie? The current captain's name is Captain B. McRae, and he's voiced by comedian Jeff Garland. Haha, <laughs> there we go. 
a performer performing a voice. In the future, humans have become so lazy and dependent on technology that they have all grown extremely overweight. Even the captain of the Axiom has grown so large that he doesn't fit in his uniform anymore. Instead, he wears the shirt around his neck with just a single button holding it in place like a cape. Garland's not the only familiar voice around the Axiom. Check out the passenger named John, who mistakes Wally e for one of the service crew robots aboard the ship. That voice is as familiar to Pixar fans as… as… well, it's just very familiar. It's the voice of Pixar's lucky charm, John Ratzenberger. As fate would have it, Wally e has another run-in with a human that leads to a meet-cute with John. A meet-cute is a fun little term used in television and film, in which a chance and amusing encounter between two characters plants the seeds for a romantic relationship. In this case, Wally e disengages a lady from her screen and wakes her up to the real ship around her. She was so fixated on her screen she didn't even know the ship had a pool. She winds up stargazing out the window and bumps into John, only to point out that Wally and Eve are having their own romantic moment out in space. John accidentally puts his hand on hers, and there you have it. The meet cute complete. Oh, and the lady's name is Mary, voiced by Kathy Najimi, famous for her roles in Hocus Pocus and Sister Act. We have one more key voice for you, and that's of the ship itself. The voice is absolutely no stranger to science fiction. In fact, it's where she got her start on the big screen, running for her life from a foreign contaminant in the shape of a terrifying alien that kinda stowed away on her ship, the Nostromo. I know, I know, I don't need to string you along, I'm talking about Sigourney Weaver. As the saying goes, you either die a hero or live long enough to see yourself become the ship. That's… that's how the saying goes, right? Oh my gosh, Eve! I only mentioned her in passing, but she's basically the heroine for the movie. Bad, bad voiceover. Alright, well, Eve, like Wally, is an acronym. Her stands for Extraterrestrial Vegetation Evaluator. Basically, where Wally -E picks up the trash, she scans it for signs of life. When and if she finds that the Earth is life sustaining again, she submits her findings to the Axiom, and the humans will make their way back home. Eve is a departure from Wally -E in almost every way. She is sleek, powerful, and she can fly. She basically looks like she was created in an Apple store. Yeah, that's no accident. She was co designed by Apple's senior VP of Industrial Design, Sir Jonathan Ive. Johnny, to those who know him. Johnny Ive? Maybe he has more in common with Wally -E than Eve. Johnny Ive sounds like Johnny Five, the name of the sentient robot from the 1980s short circuit movie series, whose design looks like an inspiration for Wally. -E. Though if you ask Andrew Stanton, the likeness is coincidental. Not to be outdone, but Wally -E does have one Apple characteristic to him. Pay attention to the sound made when Wally -E is fully charged. Mac computers make the same sound when they boot up, so there you go. Eve is not completely out of his league. When we first meet Eve, voiced by Alyssa Knight, she is objective-driven, with little time for anything outside of directive. We see Eve scanning the planet for something, and over time even the state-of-the-art bot's patience wears thin. She comes up short when scanning under the hood of a broken-down truck. Yeah, don't hurt yourself now, but there may just be an easter egg in this shot. Can you guess what it is? While you work on that, I'll just keep going. When Wally -E gifts Eve the plant in the boot, she goes into a sort of standby sleep mode, but Wally -E refuses to leave her side. He even tries to take her on little date-like outings. At the beginning of this sequence, we see the chivalrous little box bot even holding an umbrella over her while it rains. Check out when Wally -E gets struck by lightning, his battery gets fully charged. Still didn't spark Eve's attention though, poor guy. There is something going on in that egg-like bot though. She's got a green light that keeps blinking, and she can even give off energy in her dormant state. Take a look at the Christmas lights Wally uses to pull her around. The closer the lights are to Eve, the more lit they are. Eve is brought back online once aboard the Axiom. In fact, she's brought online by the Axiom's autopilot, Otto. Well, no points for originality there. There's something sort of… off about Otto. Since the humans have become less self-sufficient on the automated ship, perhaps AI has grabbed a tighter hold of the reins. By the time Captain McRae finds out, it's almost too late. Did you notice what he saw in the captain's portraits? The way Otto moves closer with each sequential shot? Yeah, that's intentional. And eerie. As it turns out, Otto is in possession of a secret directive that was held even from the captains of the ship. In the year 2110, Earth becomes classified as unsustainable, and so Shelby forthright sent out a command for the human race to remain in space. As tragic as this sounds, it's quite the boon for Pixar fans. In a message to all autopilots, Forthright orders them to enact this classified directive known as Override Directive A113. Oh snap! That's right! Classroom A113 at CalArts isn't just a fun little easter egg here, it's actually a significant detail in this story. There's another place where you can see A113, but we'll get to that another time. Needless to say, the booted plant is evidence that things have changed. 
but that information doesn't mesh well with Otto's programming making this plant the, wait for it, root of a whole slew of problems. Still, it's a symbol of life and hope, and those things are good to find especially in other Pixar movies. Like in Kanto, for instance. Look closely behind Bruno when Maribel sees where he's been living. It's up on the shelf when he gets out of the way. Right there. See? Let's go on a more internal journey in Inside Out. Joy and Sadness come into contact with Riley's imaginary friend, Bing Bong. He offers up his bag so Joy can better carry her memories. But first he has to empty it. And when he does, he pulls out the boot. Wait, where's the plant? hopefully stuffed down inside for safekeeping. There's still a junk pile of Wally -E secrets and Easter eggs to go through. Ready for more? Go check out Did You Catch These 34 Wally -E Facts Right Now? I hope you liked this video and found some cool new details you haven't seen before in Disney Pixar's Wally. -E. Make sure you subscribe to Movie Logic for more daily movie facts, trivia, and Easter eggs.